My name is Dahlia Pham, and I'm an undergraduate researcher at the Aeroacoustics Lab at UC Davis under Professor Song Ki Lee. I've created this tutorial as a visual aid on how to generate an airfoil mesh in ANSYS Workbench and then run a simulation using the same mesh in ANSYS Flint. So this is based off a written tutorial made by Danny Nguyen and Brian McConnell. And it is expected that before this tutorial, you should have a set of geometry coordinates as well as downloaded the latest version of ANSYS Student from the website. So the airfoil coordinates used in this tutorial come from the Bank 3 Case 1 NACA 12 airfoil parameters, and it is in a docs .txt file. So I'm going to open that up right now. As you can see, here is the .txt file for the new NACA coordinates that go up to approximately 19 99 points because for some reason the geometry file reader in ANSYS Workbench cannot handle anything over 2,000 coordinates. So what I ended up doing was I modified the coordinates that I had and just deleted a few so that it could fit. So the first row is going to be filled with ones. The second row is going to be filled with um, just the point, like labeling the numbers like from one to 1998. And for the last point, because you want the airfoil to close, you put a zero in the last column. So why you put a zero in the last column is because you've already specified a point up here that is identical to that point. So th these are the X coordinates and these are the Y coordinates. So your airfoil begins at 0 0.40 and you want it to end there as well. However, there's an error when if this was at 1999 because it would be considered a duplicate point and for some reason the geometry reader doesn't like that. So make sure you put a zero at your last point so there isn't a duplicate reading problem and the last column will be in zeros. If you get data for an airfoil that's in a different format, you can modify it within Microsoft Excel or any kind of editor so that you can get it in this format. Now that you have Workbench open, you're going to want to start a new project. In this case, the analysis system we're going to use is Fluid Flow Fluent. So you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name this Bank 3 Case 1, so I can keep track of it. First, what we're going to do is we're going to import the geometry from the text file and start constructing the far field boundary. But before we can do that, make sure that the geometry editor that you use is design modeler and not space claim. When you first get the software, it's going to default space claim, and that's not exactly what you want. So after you've selected that and made sure that design modeler is your default, now you can click on geometry and it's going to start up design modeler. All right. So now that we have bank case one, we want to create a new, we want to create a concept, which is a 3D curve out of the coordinates file. So we're going to get the coordinates file from wherever you saved it. In the directory, I have my coordinate files here. I'm going to select this file, and it's going to be red. Then you click Generate. If there are no errors, then there's going to be a green check mark. So if you want to view this, you will switch the view until we see the airfoil. Ah, there it is. It's kind of hard to see, but if you move things around enough, there, we can see it. It's a white outline. There. So here's your airfoil. As you can see, we have a little bit of a problem because the leading edge is at the origin, and what we want is we want the trailing edge at the origin. So what we do is we're going to create a body transformation. We're going to translate it translate this body and we're going to select the axis it's going to be rotated around which is the x-axis y and then we're going to change the distance to negative 0 0.4 because remember this has a chord length of 0 0.4 meters all right click generate and there you go. Now the trailing edge is at zero. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to create a concept and it's going to be surfaces from edges. 
where we are going to select this surface as our edge. Apply and let's see this edge and generate it. All right, so here is the surface created from our airfoil geometry. So in this step, we're going to be constructing the C grid. First, what we want to do is make a sketch on the XY plane. Create sketch. All right. Now we go down to sketching, and we are going to create a rectangle. And then we're going to create an arc by three points. Then we're going to go down to modify and trim, and we're going to trim these edges. And now you have an approximate secret shape. It doesn't encase the whole airfoil, but that's when we set some constraints. So we want it to be symmetrical. First, we're going to click on the x-axis, and then the top, and the bottom, and we're going to make sure it's symmetrical. All right, now we're going to dimension the far field. Go down to dimensions, create a vertical dimension, where we click on the top line and the x-axis. We're going to set this to 15 meters. All right, that's pretty big. And now we're going to create a general dimension. Click on this. Kind of hard to see. Click on this bottom line. And set this to 15 as well. And if you go back to viewing just the x and y axis, you have your far field boundary sketched. And now that you've created a sketch of your C grid far field boundary, you're going to go, want to go to concept, create a surface from sketches, select sketch three, apply, and generate the surface. And now you should have two surfaces, one for the airfoil, as you can see here, and uh, one for the far field boundary. Next, I will be teaching you how to create the domain using a Boolean operation. So for, our, so for setting the far field domain, we're going to create a Boolean. Change unite to subtract. And then for the target body, we're going to select the far field domain. For the tool body, we're going to choose the airfoil. Now, going to generate it and if you can see the airfoil is now missing from the far field boundary and now, and now that we've created this we are going to want to section the domain next so first freeze these results the next part of this tutorial is to section the domain First, I usually like to start out by marking where my transition location is. In this case, we know I dimensioned a line here to 0 0.065 away from the leading edge and then placed a construction point and on the horizontal and the vertical so I can know better how to draw my lines. I also set constraints where I fix these so that they won't move around when I start sketching. So now I want to start sketching a line. I want it to exit at this point, and I'm drawing it out to the far field. See how these points don't move? If you don't fix them, you have to go to constraints and select fixed, then they will move and it will give you a really hard time. Go here and make sure the points that you make to mark where the trailing edges are fixed. Okay, now you want to draw your other lines protruding from the airfoil all the way out to the far field. You want to be really careful with this part because it sets the foundation for your mesh. You want to set this to 75 degrees. Perfect. So now you have effectively sectioned your domain. 
So now you want to create a line from that sketch. Create a concept, lines from sketches, select sketch 5, and then generate. Alright, so now you have all these lines sticking out. Now that you've created the line from the sketch, go to tools, projection, select all the edges. Hold down control as you do so to select multiple edges. Select the entire domain as the body. Let's go back on the edges. And generate. And we're going to want to suppress this body. Now we want to go to surface body. And now you see under fluid solid. Let's change that to fluid. And then generate. And with that, click save. Then we're done with the geometry part of this tutorial. In the next tutorial I'll create, I will go over meshing.